Hello everyone! After a month of work, I finally managed to create a level editor for the game. It's going to help me in creating and testing new mechanics in the game. Our editor is created using Unity's scene GUI, so it will be overlaid on the scene view. Let's quickly look at the features that it provides. Level generator is a script that creates an instance of a level from the data saved in a scriptable object. When creating a level, a scriptable object will be created. When we save the level, a JSON file with serialized scriptable object data will be also created. The level generator has two parameters that we can manipulate. A size of an outline that each tile has and the size of a tile itself. The level editor, this class, creates tools that have different functions. Right now I have only two tools, a select tool and the paint tool. The paint tool lets us place one of the available tiles on the board. After saving and loading, the tile will stay modified and the scriptable object inspector will reflect those changes. Editor will fetch all available tires from the other scriptable object and draw buttons from it. As I mentioned before, all of the level editor layout is made using the Scene GUI Unity framework. A good presentation about this is linked in the description below. Next feature is modifying tiles and saving them as a new tile in the available tiles map. After selecting a tile, we can add components to it that change its behaviors. We will go through the tile behaviors a bit later, so let's select one of the grass tiles and change its ground color. It is done by changing a reference to a game object we want to instantiate in prefab instantiate tile visual behavior. I know, pretty long name for a class. Now we have two options. One is to update a tile. It will change the already existing grass tile to have a light ground object. Or to create a new tile, here we have to specify the name of the tile. After that, the new tile will be added to the tiles map and a new button will appear. As you can see, I still have some problems with the cursor here. The last thing the editor can do is to set the triggers. We will talk about the trigger action reaction system in the next video. So now let's make a little editor from scratch. This editor will enable us to instantiate prefabs on mouse button click in the scene. It will consist of tools panel and a prefab selection panel, similar to the editor that I have right now. So let's open a new Unity project. Our editor will consist of three scripts. Level, a scriptable object that holds data needed to create an instance of the level in the game. Level generator, script that will be provided with a level object and will create an instance in the game. Level editor, a scene GUI editor that will provide us with tools to create a level. So let's take a look at each of those scripts. Let's start with the level class. This class has only one field, which is collection of objects of type level object data. Our editor will only instantiate and remove game objects from the scene, so values that we need in each object of these types are position, rotation, scale and the prefab name. We will also add a reference to the game object that was instantiating using this data, but we will add an annotation JSON ignore to it. We will set this reference during runtime so it's not a part of a level creation data. Level exposes two public methods. First, to JSON is serializing itself to JSON and returns a JSON string. Second is responsible for removing a level object data object from the array. Now the level generator. Let's take a look at inspector fields. First, we have a reference to the level object that will be used to instantiate a level in the game. Next, we are storing an array of possible game objects that we can put in our level and a field describing a layer that will rake us to when placing objects in the scene. At the start of the game, we will generate a runtime level instance based on the level scriptable object data. There are three steps needed to create a level. First, creating a map of prefabs, 
so that we will have easy access to those prefabs when using the prefab name values in level object data structure. Second, we create a parent game object for each instantiated level game object, it just for keeping the scene hierarchy clean. And third, and the most important, we create game objects using data in level suitable object. The create object method takes a level object data as a parameter and uses it to find a proper game object from the previously instantiated map and makes an instance of it. Then sets the transform components using pass data. Do you remember the instantiated object reference in the level object data structure? Now we will set this reference. And that's it with the level generator. Now the most interesting part, level editor. This class has to have initialize on load attribute. This is a pretty long class, so I have to split it into regions so we can go through it better. First, let's take a look at the class fields. As we said before, our editor will only be able to place and remove game object. So for clarity, let's define their IDs in constant int fields. Then we will need a string that will be used as a path for saving and loading our levels and a reference to the generator and the level that we are currently modifying. I also added two properties that use editor prefs for storing which tool, remove or paint, and which prefab was selected the last time. Those values will be used as default values when entering level editor again. Now let's take a look at the initialization and unity callbacks that we are going to use. The init editor method, besides getting the level generator reference, will subscribe its main method on scene GUI to Unity's scene view that during scene GUI action. On destroy, just to be safe, we'll be unsubscribing from that method. The init method has a menu item annotation, which will enable us to call this method and enable the editor from Unity's top menu panel. Now let's dive into on scene GUI method. Because this method is subscribed to the on during scene GUI event, it will enable us to safely draw in the scene view. The scene view object will be passed by the during scene view GUI action. To draw anything in the scene, we need to start our code with handles that begin GUI and finish it with handles that end GUI. For example, we can draw boxes to separate parts of our editor. First, we will draw a right side panel. In this panel, we will draw the save, load and new buttons, each calling a proper method. Let's take a look at those methods. We have all of them in a separate region. The new level method will create a new instance of the level scriptable object and will save it in the project folder. The load level will check if there is an asset and JSON file, and if any of those is missing, it will create it. The reason we create a JSON file is to have an easy way to pass our level data. We can fetch JSON from basically anywhere and it's the most versatile way of storing our data. To create a JSON file, we are using the toJSON method from level class. And the save level method will first update the level by going through each object in the level object data array from the level scriptable object and change its values accordingly to the transform component from the instantiated game object reference. Now you see why we need that runtime reference. Whenever we change the transform of the instantiated game object, we can save that data using this game object. Now that we have our level reference loaded, we can draw the rest of the editor. First, the left panel, which will have buttons responsible for selecting a prefab to instantiate. We will use the available objects array from the level generator to create buttons. The most interesting part of creating a prefab button is the usage of the asset preview that get asset preview method that will return a texture with an image of a prefab. It would be the same image as you see in the inspector when you select a prefab in the project. So now we can create a button using this texture and the prefab name. 
to restrict users from selecting multiple prefabs, we will use the toggle instead of the button. When a toggle is selected, it will assign its prefab name to the selected object ID property. Then we are going to draw a bottom menu that consists of the paint and remove tools. Here for fun, we will use another GUI layout method called selection grid. This method enables us to have a grid like toggles, we just need to provide some parameters to this method. The selection grid returns to which index of provided buttons is active. Then we can assign this index to a selected tool property and compare later against our tool's IDs. This will help us to determine which tool is active and what action we want to perform on mouse events. So it leads us to the last part of the editor, which is handling mouse events. So let's take a look at the handle mouse event method. This method will first check if mouse button was clicked and no other modifying keyboard key was not pressed. If that's true, then we will compare the selected tool, which was assigned by the selection grid that we saw just a minute ago with one of our defined tools IDs. So we have two options now, add an object or remove one. Each one of those methods will cast a ray from the scene camera. The add object method will only raycast the ground layer to place objects on. The remove method will cast everything, but later it will check if hit game object is a part of the level data and if so, it will remove the proper level data object. So that's it for our editor. Let's take a look at the finished product. So we can create a new level, which will create a scriptable object. We can select different prefabs to place them on the ground in the position of the mouse. Saving will create a text asset. Loading the level again reflects all the changes we made. We can also remove items using the remove tool. Again, after saving and loading, the level reflects changes. And that's it for this little tutorial. My advice to you is to download the project from GitHub and mess around with it. Add some new tools and functions. So I'll help you to see at the end of this month with another update. Take care.